Hey guys, what's up? It's Sparsh from IB Made Easy and today with a friend of mine, we are going to answer the question, what are the best IB books for you for different subjects? Let's go! Hi everyone, I'm Sparsh's friend Stephanie and I'll also be joining in and giving you some book recommendations. I, I also did the IB program but in a different place to Sparsh and I got a 44. Let's start with maths. I took maths HL and I think this applies to math as well as well, but I feel that the Cambridge book and the Heiss and Harris, is that how you say it? The Heiss, Heiss and Harris book? I think these two books are really amazing. I did not feel it with the Oxford book, so if you have that, I think it's still fine. The Oxford book is an 8 out of 10, but I would say the Cambridge book is like a 9.5. And my brother, who just started the IB diploma, is using the Heisen Harris book now, and he really seems to like it as well. So I was using the Cambridge book for maths whenever I didn't understand the concept from the start, but when I wanted to revise, I used the Oxford exam preparation guide. The Cambridge book is straight to the point. It's all about the examples and then the exercises. Where else on the Oxford book, I feel like the questions are really old and I did not really connect with the book as much as I would like to. All right, for IB economics, I recommend that you use the Oxford book right here or the Cambridge book. Look, for IB economics, both of the books are fine. I looked at both of them. But what really made the difference for me was the Oxford Study Guide by Konstantin Ziogas. The study guide is different to the course companion. The study guide is not this. The study guide is a different book by Oxford. It's much thinner. I highlighted that entire thing. I didn't really study the, uh, the course companion because I felt like it was quite thick and I was a little bit intimidated by that. I think if you want to study economics from the start and from the basics, I think you should use this book. But for economics, both the Cambridge and Oxford books are fine. Moving on to business management and for this, there is only one publisher that is just fantastic and that has to be Paul Huang from IBID. His book for business management is so fantastic. I just, I have highlighted this entire thing for studying for exams and he also has his, he also has his exam preparation guide. So I studied the first book, The Course Companion, then I studied this as well and I made notes from these books. It was just fantastic. Paul Huang has it all. He even releases a case study guide for the paper one and I definitely, definitely recommend you buy it. I, I don't know so much about the Cambridge book but I think it works as well. Again, I would say the Cambridge book is an 8 out of 10 or 8.5 so you can still get a 7 with that. There is no such thing as that you can't get a 7 with another book. Book it has but the Paul Wong book is a 10 out of 10 there's nothing better than this for like over 10 years ever since it's been published a few moments later and so I did very different subject to Sparsh at a high level I did bio chemistry and geography and at standard level I did Malay English and uh, maths all right so um before I begin, I just want to say that I didn't use books for a lot of my subjects because a lot of my teachers, they just made their own notes and just gave it to me and I used those. And for subjects such as um, Malay, uh, my teacher just printed out worksheets and we just did those and that just sufficed for the exam. So um, what I will be going through though was the books that I did use for other subjects and that I find are quite good. I use this book for TOK. Um, it is the Cambridge book. Um, and it's actually quite it's actually quite common. You can find it everywhere, which is which is great because it means that it's widely accessible, but it also means that a lot of people tend to draw content from this book. So I would recommend um, using it just so you have a general understanding of the different concepts in TOK. But when it does come to writing an essay or PowerPoint, make sure you also reference the notes you make from your teachers in class. So when the teachers present their PowerPoint slides, make sure you take good notes so that you can use that when it comes to presentation or um, the TOK essay. Sometimes teachers do miss out things and this thing just gives you really holistic knowledge on what TOK is about. Right, for maths, the textbook I use in class I would not recommend. I use the Hayes textbook and I think the concepts there were just explained in a very confusing manner and what the exam actually tested was um, a lot 
less complicated than what the book made it out to be. So what I used um, to first get an understanding of, of what I was learning before I referenced the textbook was this. It's actually an A-level book, it's AS level. Um, it's published by Cambridge. As you can see, it's really, it's super thin and it just gets to the point. It gets to the point and it's very clear with uh, with all the different concepts. Go ahead and try, go ahead and try A-level books. Like, don't think that just because it's very different, just because it's not IB, you can't use it because a lot of concepts, there are overlaps. Nice. So, Course Companion is just one thing and then they have their study guides sometimes, they have their exam preparation guide sometimes, and they have their revision guide sometimes. And I think that they're, they all have different purposes. The Course Companion is like your main bulk of knowledge, but after that you need to cut down to these other books that are going to refine your knowledge and teach you the logic so much better so that you're not just gaining abundant knowledge that you don't need for your exam. Moving on to English, I took English language and literature and I did not use a book. I was using uh, websites such as LitCharts or SmartNotes, uh, websites like Weightsaver and you can get lots of knowledge from there if you have, if you take the initiative to search about your novels. And for language, our class had subscribed to the In Thinking IB website. Fantastic, there's lots of sample written tasks, sample FOA, sample IOCs and sample past paper responses on that website and lots of tips for English. For Ab initio, I did not have a book but that's because my subject Indonesian is not a popular one and there is no book in existence for IB Indonesian and so you can just go on to quizlet.com and find lots of vocabulary sets uh, or your teacher can teach you really well pretty much for languages you don't really need an exact book. Nice. Moving on, geography. It's quite embarrassing. Barsh, cut this part out, please. Basically, there's a car parking next to me, and I don't want to look like I'm talking to myself in the car. A few moments later. I love geography, and I looked through a lot of books, and the one I found to be the best was the Oxford book, this one, uh, by Nagel and Cook. And I like it because it's just really, it's just really, as I said, summarized. Um, the case studies are very well packaged, so part of, whether it's a case study, person. <laughs> The reason why I like this book is because you never get confused about whether um, the, a section of book is part of a case study or whether it is an entirely new section because they outline everything very clearly. On top of that, this book is very good for fast knowledge. So if you're studying for a test later than you're supposed to be, then you can quickly flick through this book and you can get the gist of what every topic is. It's, it's pretty great. The other book I did use in geography is extremely heavy. As you can see, it's really thick. I never brought this to school because it was just too heavy to carry. But I use this book for case studies, basically. Uh, case studies are very extensive and they write in depth. So you can always take away a lot more than you need for the examination. But sometimes, if, you, if that's what you want, because you like geography, then this is the book for you. Looking for fast, fast knowledge because you don't have enough time or if you just don't really enjoy it as much as I do, um, then I would definitely recommend this other book. This other book. Oh my god! Back to Sparsh. So about IB Physics, I recommend you use the Cambridge book more than anything else. I have the Oxford book, that's what my school bought for us, but I really didn't like it. I think I've covered all the subjects and there are lots of YouTube channels, so if you don't have the right book, that's not to worry. For example, for economics, there is Econs plus Dal, and for physics, there's, uh, there's people like uh, donor he is really good for ib physics and thank you so much for watching this video from me and stephanie check out her channel as well there's a link in the description she's starting an ib channel for herself she got 44 points don't forget to subscribe like comment and all that stuff that you do on youtube subscribe and get your friends to subscribe get your entire class to subscribe so that you can discuss whatever i'm talking about as a class and you know you are better united than separated. All right, goodbye guys.